number five. I'm a truck driver, and I was heading east on I-80 up through Illinois. I had stayed the night, well, the afternoon in Des Moines, to get some sleep. I had gotten about eight hours, and I had just gotten back on the road. It was about dusk, and the sun was just about to set. So I'm driving, and I see a figure just ahead of me on the I-80, and it was right on the side of the road. When I say right on the side of the road, I don't mean in the grass. Its toes were right on the white line. I slowed down a little bit to kind of see what was going on and avoid it if necessary. When I get about 50 yards from it, I got down to about 50 miles per hour, and I could see it pretty clear. I had my brights on and everything. It was a man. Well, it looked like a man. About 5'9 or 5'10. Couldn't have been more than 100 pounds soaking wet. And when I get up to him, he looks up at me, and I kid you not. He had no eyes, no mouth, no nostrils. There was no orifice on his face. He was pale white, no hair, no features whatsoever. It looked like a skeleton with bleach white skin. He was just kind of standing there looking right at me. I slowed down and as soon as I saw his face, he looked up at me and, boy, I flipped the hammer down all the way to Chicago. I never looked back. My blood ran cold. My hair stood up. It was one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in my life. Number four. A decade ago, when I was about 13, my dad got a call from a friend of his. His friend had shot a huge eight-point white-tailed buck and lost it the night before in the woods. The deer was shot with a bow at sunset and ran into the woods across the road. My dad's friend called him at 8 at night and told him he'd need help finding it the next day. So dad asked if I want to learn about tracking deer. I'm all for it because hunting is amazing and off we go the next morning. This is out on Maryland's eastern shore. Lots of woods, lots of hills, lots of walking. I was tired and trying to retain what these two hunters are telling me but still having a blast. We found a really long blood trail, fur, and the whole thing was fun for me and my dad. We've been out there for maybe an hour or two. I take a break near a small patch of trees that connect to the massive woods where the blood trail went. My dad and his friend go into the woods, and I'm just looking at the trees, trying to spot a white belly or part of a rag. But then I see something. Something perched on four limbs. It was hard to see, and it's been about a decade since. But what I saw looked like a fox. With a short muzzle, no tail, and really long limbs. Like deer length, deer thin limbs. It's just standing there, maybe 20 yards from me. I can't tell what it is, I just know it's strange looking and not moving. But that's not the weird part. The thing kind of just lopes away. Like those cat videos where the cat is scared, lifts its front feet off the ground, and runs off on its back legs. Like that, only it held its front legs higher and it ran like it was the way it had run its entire life, like that was natural for it to do, hunched and hurried, but not wobbly. I only saw it for a few seconds. Dad wound up scaring the shit out of me by yelling about the eight-pointer being found. I told Dad I saw a weird animal. He said it may have been a fox. I told him about the legs being weird and long. He gave me the look. The look that says stop making shit up. I got that look a lot. Well, I learned how to gut, drag, and track a deer that day. We took a trip to the butcher, and I got to watch them begin processing, and that was that. As for what I saw, I've always had a big imagination. I could have just been sleep deprived, because 6 a.m. on Saturday at 13 years old is bullshit. Maybe it was just a fox that moved weird. Maybe it was a deer with a messed up head. I don't know. I only saw it for a few seconds. But what I do know is that deer and foxes don't run on their back legs. Number three. A friend of mine recently told me a story I found to be very unsettling and particularly interesting. It was clear that this was not an experience he liked to speak of often, and he was genuinely uncomfortable when describing it. For that reason alone, I believe it to be true, and I'd like to try to find some answers for him. About four or five years ago, 
my friend Jack was driving down a road with some friends on the way to another friend's house. From what I understand, on one side of the road was woods, and on the other side were residences. At one point while driving, he and his friends all noticed what appeared to be a naked man running at an amazing speed some ways down the road, before quickly darting into the woods and disappearing. They all dismissed it as trick of the eye at this point. Sometime later, they reached the house, and one of them went to knock on the door to get the other friend. Jack and one other got out of the car, and were leaning against it just talking and waiting. At this point, the same naked seeming humanoid figure emerged from the woods, and was staring right at them. He described it as humanoid, but taller than what you consider a tall person. He said it had no mouth and large black eyes. It had long legs, which had two sets of knees, like you'd imagine a goat man would have. He also said that it had incredibly long arms that hung down in front of it, nearly down to the ground. It studied them for a moment, and both Jack and his friend saw it, but were too stunned to do anything or say anything to one another. After a beat, the creature began to walk briskly at them. It was picking up speed, and Jack decided to take action. And... As most of us do in real situations where we're scared and we don't know the right course of action, he did something kind of silly and very New Jersey. Jack just yelled, Hey! at it. And funny enough, it worked, and the creature ran off back into the woods. Jack said that after the creature disappeared, he quickly got everyone back into the car and drove the hell out of there. Jack calls it his alien story, but I'm not totally convinced that that's what he was dealing with here, so... I'm very interested in hear what you folks might think. Let me know. I'm sure he'd love to hear your thoughts too. Number two. Me and two friends, Jamie and Dan, decided to go camping in southern New York, up on a mountain. There was a dirt road that ran right down the mountain, and off of it were smaller dirt roads that had some good camping spots. I don't know if you were really supposed to be camping there or not, but there were a lot of fire pits, so obviously people do it anyway. So we set up our tent and get a fire going. We have a couple of beers and are bitching about our women, and the sun goes down. We all looked at each other because the woods got really quiet. You couldn't even hear crickets. Everything was just dead quiet. It felt like there was a lightning storm coming because you could feel the static in the air, and all the hair on the back of my neck stood up. Jamie started saying that he felt like the air was humming, and then all of a sudden, there was a real deep bass noise, and the sprite light in the distance that flashed and lit up the whole woods. It looked like the light when a real big firework explodes for the first few seconds, but it lasted for probably a minute before it split into three or four other lights and shot back down into the trees. We could see all the lights glowing out in the woods, and then there was this big gust of wind and it was gone. Everything smelled like it had just rained, but it never did. We didn't know what to do, but figured we would just wait it out. But nothing happened. We thought maybe it could have been a meteor, so we decided to leave it alone and went back to bitching about our women. At about 2 in the morning, we decided to turn in, so Jamie and I went to sleep in the tent, and Dan said he was going to sleep by the fire. About an hour later, I wake up because Dan is in the tent shaking us, saying that there is something big watching the camp. He said that it was about 50 feet from the fire, and he thought that it might be a bear, but that it was standing on two legs and bobbing back and forth like it was trying to get a better look at him. While he was talking, we hear this loud scream. I've never heard anything like it before as long as I've been alive. It sounded like a pig being slaughtered, but deeper and so loud that it made your ears ring. The next thing I remember was hearing three or four more things come running toward the campsite and the embers from the fire being kicked up and landing on the tent. The things, or creatures, or whatever they were, kept running up to the tent and grunting and running back into the woods. Every once in a while one of them would scream again and pull on one of the tent poles, dragging the whole tent a foot or two. The tent was collapsing on one side and we didn't know what else to do, so we just started screaming as loud as we could. After a minute or so, everything went quiet again, so we made a run for the truck as fast as we could and hit the gas. While we were leaving, we saw one of the fuckers in the headlights standing in the road. I told Jamie to gun it, and the thing straightened up and puffed out its chest. It must have been at least eight feet tall. 
It had dark gray hair all over its body except for the front, where the hair was white or yellow around the chest. Its face looked kind of like a dog, but at the same time, not really. I know what the classic Bigfoot looks like, and this was way different. It didn't even move when we drove towards it. We had to swerve around it or we would have hit it. We drove back down the mountain to the highway and parked the truck in a gas company parking lot. We were going to tell the cops what happened, but we didn't know if we were camping somewhere we shouldn't be and we had been drinking all night, couldn't afford a DUI, so we just waited for the sun to come up and sobered up. When we drove back to get our stuff, there wasn't anything there. Everything was gone. There was no tent, no cooler, nothing. We told some of our friends what happened and they wouldn't believe us since we'd been drinking, so we decided to just forget about it. If you want to come check it out, I'll take you right to the place it happened. There's still tracks from where we peeled out and lots of big gashes in the dirt where the tent was, but there's nothing else. I don't know if it had anything to do with the lights we saw, but it was the weirdest damn thing that any of us have ever experienced. Number one. Okay, I'm going to make this quick. Today, over a few beers... I shared a few spooky stories from No Sleep with my wife. As I tell her about a story from a commenter who says something that looked like his mother tried to call him away from a campsite in the dead of night, she literally froze. She just had this look of sheer terror on her face. In all our years together, I'd only seen that face once. It was when our four-year-old got hit in the head with a baseball bat and was gushing blood. He's fine, don't worry, just some stitches. So the face was kind of a big deal. Okay, let me get on with this. This post is already way longer than I intended it to be. Here's her story, told by her, paraphrased by me, with details from further questioning included. When I was 14, and away at girls camp, we were in a really remote forest in New Mexico. One day, we went on a hike, and my bunkmates returned to find our bungalow completely trashed. All of our belongings were scattered about, like someone had been searching for something. We told ourselves it was one of the other girls, despite knowing that everyone was on the hike together. But we were the only people for miles. That night, I was very afraid. I couldn't sleep at all. I just spent the entire night looking out the window. After a while, I saw something emerge from the woods. It looked like a person, but it was crawling on all fours. And then a few more appeared. I would say there had to be between four to six of them. She doesn't remember the exact number. It's been more than a decade since the incident. They just slowly, methodically, crawled back and forth, creeping from the tree line. The moon illuminated the clearing, and back to the forest. I couldn't tell if they were male or female, or what they were wearing, or if they were wearing anything at all, really. I could only see that they definitely looked human. They just crawled back and forth for what seemed like hours. And then, out of nowhere, they abruptly left. The whole time, I was so certain my eyes were playing tricks on me that maybe I was just tired and imagining things. I had convinced myself of that for so long until you told me that story. After she told it, and after a little questioning, she wouldn't talk about it anymore. I guess getting too freaked out. I totally don't blame her. But I do wonder, what's out there? So many people, many of whom are reputable, credible people, like my wife, have these experiences that defy logic and reason. Is there something in the woods that evades our comprehension? Some ancient, unified force hell-bent on remaining hidden from humanity? 
a force to which we sometimes fall victim? Update. So I've been thinking a lot about my wife's story. I was really interested in finding out exactly where it happened, so I texted her older brother this morning and asked about their childhood camping experiences. After a brief conversation, he told me he camped in the same area that year, also for a church function, and that it was the Carson National Forest. That checks out, as it's only 2 hours and 34 minutes away from Albuquerque. That's all my wife remembers about where it happened. The creepy part is, after our conversation, I was watching an interview with David Politis and saw that New Mexico has a few missing 411 cases. I looked more closely at the location using a map, and you guessed it. The missing person cases are in the fucking Carson National Forest. <laughs>